A senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, has called for an investigation into alleged killing of 21 persons by security forces during the COVID-19 lockdown. In his later dated April 16, he said 21 Nigerians have lost their lives in the hands of trigger-happy security officials. The human rights activist urged the National Human Rights Commission to update its report which claims that 18 persons have been killed to 21 because three other persons were killed in Cross River and Anambra states during the lockdown. Palano added that apart from updating its reports, the NHRC should conduct an investigation into the unlawful killing of the 21 persons and ensure that the culprits are prosecuted for murder uh, or culpable homicide. Joining us live via Skype to speak on keeping our leaders accountable during lockdown is the Executive Director, Sarah Adetokumbo Mumuni. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Some have said the virus is distracting us from other matters, like keeping our leaders really accountable. For instance, um, there, where are we really on the National Assembly um, issues with cars and delivery? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, uh, you see that what's up. Okay, I'm just basically looking at the fact we as a people seem to be distracted by the coronavirus away from truly keeping our leaders accountable. And I was just referring quickly to the instance of the National Assembly and the car delivery in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. You see, the position that I take and which all Nigerians must take is that in a matter of public emergency, money, if they are available, must be spent for the betterment of the Nigerian people. We cannot be talking about an epidemic and some group of people who call themselves lawmakers who now consign money for the purpose of satisfying matters of personal desire, like if a car that is worth about twenty thousand or twenty thousand dollars per person. If you take that and you look at it contextually, you will know that that money is not sustainable in view of the problem that we now face. Okay, has there been any response to the request that the National Assembly give the 37 billion naira renovation fund to states as COVID-19 relief for the poor and vulnerable? You see, the, the demand that we have made is in line with what is reasonable and justifiable. You see, in a democracy, we should not, under any circumstance, spend any money that appears to wasteful, especially in view of the fact that our people are still living from hand to mouth. You see, the truth of the matter is that if they intend to do what Nigerians want and intend, they must Reconcile 37 billion um, naira that they have assigned for the renovation of the National Assembly, according to the state of the federation and Abuja, so that our money will be properly spent and it will then make sense. That is when they can say they are indeed the representative of the people. Yes. Okay, so how do you also plan to hold your official Twitter handle uh, released a statement uh, yesterday um, about the situation with um, the cars for lawmakers in Nasrallah State? How do you plan to hold Governor Abdullahi Sule uh, to account for the breach 
uh, of what you say is a constitutional code of conduct for lawmakers uh, spending 500 million to buy 24 cars at this time. Shouldn't it be the lawmakers being held accountable? Did you get my question? I can't get that. Okay, I'm talking about the the statement your um, organization put out as regards the situation in Nasarawa State. You were saying that you're going to hold the governor um, accountable for a constitutional uh, breach of uh, code of conduct, according to you, in relation to the 500 million naira you say they just uh, released to buy 24 cars for lawmakers. My question is. Should you be holding the governor accountable or the lawmakers who are taking um, these cars in this uh, time of crisis? Now, you see, it is when people who call themselves our rulers or our lawmakers, it is when they have decided to be extremely irresponsible. That is when this type of money will be spent on, on, on purchase of cars for about 24 group of lawmakers. I'm saying, the organization is also saying that those expenses are unsustainable and they fly in the face on, of the peculiar demand and needs of the natural people. We will look into how this will play out, and we are ready to go to court on it. Because we cannot just be passive about all these things. We have to, to be responsible, and we have to force our lawmakers and our governors to also be accountable. All right, we understand you're also urging President Muhammad Buhari to immediately reverse proposal to cut um, the UBEC budget from 111.78 billion naira to 61.02 billion naira and a basic healthcare budget from 44.49 uh, billion to about 17 billion naira. There are many instances of government rescinding a decision in recent times despite outcry. What makes you think? that they would cut National Assembly uh, an ASEROT budget instead, even if uh, you secure a court judgment compelling them to? You see, the only way one can fight any government in a democracy is not by physicals, but by the use, by the use of the instrumentality created in the constitution to fight the government. The constitution has said, and that is sensible in a democratic society, that if there is a dispute between citizens and between governments, the best way to arbitrate on it is to go before the court of competent jurisdiction and submit yourself to the adjudication of the court. That is what we intend to do. If we obtain the judgment, let us see whether they will follow the judgment or not. Okay, there's been a lot of controversy um, over the sharing of palliatives, and many, including your organization, says it has exposed the lack of social uh, protection system in the country. How do you think the federal government can better work with 36 states and FCT to quickly get money directly into the hands of the poorest who need help now? Hello? Uh, you didn't get my question? I didn't get the last part of the question. Okay, I, I was, I'm talking about the palliative, the issue surrounding the palliative and the fact yes. that you, yes. your organization says it has exposed a lack of a social protection system in the country. So I'm asking you, how do you think the federal government can better work with the states to quickly get money directly um, into the hands of uh, those we describe as the poorest and need it right now? Good. 
You see? You see? There have been ways by which the government have been distributing money to poor Nigeria. So, those methods should now be re-employed, strengthened, and that is the way it can be done. The idea of now taking cash all about in fact of the risk that the, those ones are subject to does not make sense to me. This is not, this is not the first time they will be paying the poorest of the poor in Nigeria. And we have not had complaints about this method earlier. Why should it not be that it is now that the Nigerians are in need, seriously, of benefiting from the palliatives, the palliatives that we now find complaints being made? So what the president should do is to embark on the previous system which has served the poor very well in the past, and to strengthen that system so that the, the poor of the poor can benefit from whatever palliative the federal government sends out. All right, before I let you go, I want you to speak briefly on the recent report that Interpol bust 1.5 million euro face mask fraud traced to Nigeria. Are you aware of this in the first instance? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether I'm still of the, of the fact that you are talking about now. Okay, so... If it, is, if it is already in the news, so let me get what it is about. Okay, I, I, I guess we'll just have to uh, leave it there and just uh, um, speak to you another time. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. It's a pleasure speaking with you. All right. We'll go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll bring you more news. Do stay with us.